Hey, welcome to 5.4 How to PCR Master Mix. Uh, this is Mr. Armand, and we're going to go through today and talk to you about a few things dealing with master mixes. Uh, you might be asking, what is a master mix? So, we're going to define first what a master mix is, uh, and then we're going to figure out what components are needed to make one of these things, especially for PCR. Uh, PCR is what we're going to be doing in this chapter, so this is going to be brought together for this, uh, this reaction. Next thing is we're going to know what those components do. So we're going to discuss the functions of the uh, components in the PCR master mix. So last time when we were talking, uh, we, we talked about the polymerase chain reaction. You learned about the polymerase chain reaction, that was PCR. And we said that this was a discovery um, that Dr. Kerry Mullis had won the Nobel Peace Prize for in 1993, had discovered in 1983, and he received a large amount of money for this. I think it was like somewhere around $10,000 was his, his bonus uh, that year just for discovering that. And then, of course, with the Nobel Peace Prize, you're talking lots and lots of money on top of that. So... A uh, well-known chemist, um, and uh, he he discovered this this uh, this reaction, which helps in so many applications. I'm talking about forensics or GMO analysis or any kind of DNA analysis. Really, polymerase chain reaction is the go-to for something called amplifying DNA. And so we're going to talk. We talked about what amplification is. We said that that's just making lots and lots of copies of your target DNA sequence, and so that way you can if you just have a swipe sample from a crime scene or you don't have a whole lot of DNA to go off of, you are able to make lots of copies of this so that way you can use it and you can send copies of that to whatever lab you want uh, and you guys can collaborate with other labs to, to figure out maybe who the, the, the suspect is in a crime case. Uh, finally, the last thing was we talked about therm, uh, thermocyclers and we said that a thermocycler is basically just this piece of equipment used in PCR and it takes a it takes something in it the solution and it brings it up in temperature near boiling um, so that way we can get uh, lots and lots of um, this DNA double double strand to separate out and then from there uh, it cools it down really quick uh, somewhere to around uh, 60 ish degrees 50 60s uh, depends upon the primer that you are that you're using, and this is the annealing stage. The first one was called denature. The second one was, is the annealing stage, and where these primers are going to bind to your target DNA sequence, and then it ramps back up again, uh, somewhere around 72 degrees, so that way that DNA polymerase, whichever one it is, the TAC or the PFU, is going to come in and it's going to make a copy of that target DNA sequence. And this is gonna happen over and over and over again. Usually about 30 cycles will give you over a billion copies of this DNA sequence. And that's really what you're looking for. So usually about 30 cycles is the target uh, number of cycles for doing this. And so let's write that down here. So 30, about 30 cycles. And I'm writing this with my finger because I can't find my, my pen there. But there you go. So 30 cycles uh, is for what, what we need for, for this PCR reaction. So the question that we're asking today is, what is a master mix? And the first thing that comes to my mind when I think master mix is I think a DJ up there in the middle of a crowd. And he's DJ master mix and you know, he's ripping out some records and whatnot. And so, uh, but that is so far from the truth what a master mix is. Uh, so we're going to quickly talk about what a master mix is. So a PCR master mix is essentially uh, just a mixture of all these components that are necessary and common to a reaction or an experiment. In our case, we're going to be talking about the PCR master mix. And basically what it is, is it's everything that you need that you are going to use to uh, copy DNA and you can set aside these reagents you can package them up um, and you can store them for long periods of time and then all you have to do essentially is just add the DNA that you want to be copied uh, which is also known as the template DNA so DNA template DNA like I said before is 
also known as target DNA, and this is the DNA that's going to be copied in a PCR reaction. So let's talk about what a master mix actually has inside of it. Uh, each PCR master mix is going to contain uh, several key components, and they may be called different things depending upon what company you order them from, uh, but essentially it's the same stuff. All right, so we're going to talk about what the same stuff is for all PCR master mixes that you're going to get. Um, so, and you can even make your own PCR master mix. There's nothing holding you back there. All right, so each PCR master mix is going to contain, uh, first, some sort of DNA polymerase that's temperature tolerant. So something that we will withstand uh, high amounts of temperature at boiling point, so uh, around 100 degrees Celsius. So those uh, DNA polymerases we find usually in places like inside of bacteria that are inside of uh, either hot springs or hydrothermal vents, and we isolate out those enzymes because they are very strong and will resist high temperatures, things that, uh, that we need for, for this PCR. All right, so the next thing we're going to need is something called DNTPs. DNTPs, and remember what DNTPs mean because that's going to pop up several times. So go ahead and highlight that out somewhere or write it down. Make sure that you know what DNTPs are. And these are just the building blocks, basically. Uh, DNA nucleotides is essentially what it is. And these are DNA nucleotides. Only The only difference is that from a regular DNA molecule is that they have two extra phosphate groups. And those two extra phosphate groups are going to allow them to be incorporated into a DNA molecule. The next thing that a master mix contains for PCR is something called a forward DNA primer and also a reverse DNA primer. All right, so these forward and reverse primers, primer here is nothing more than just a small segment of DNA that's complementary to your template DNA. Uh, and so this is a small segment, they call it an oligonucleotide. Oligo just means few. So these are few nucleotides that are put together somewhere between 10 to 35 uh, nucleotides and and it's complementary to that targets that piece of DNA that you're going to want to copy okay so there's a forward primer and the forward primer is going to go um, of course five prime to three prime but it's going to go in one direction and then you have the reverse DNA primer it also is going to go five prime to three prime but in the opposite direction for the complementary strand okay Of course, you can't do molecular biology without a buffer, right? So you have to add this uh, TAC or PFU buffer to the system so that way it creates a normal environment for this DNA polymerase. Uh, this buffer system is going to regulate the pH and as well as the salinity and all that stuff for this enzyme so that way it's in a nice happy media and it can do its thing whenever it comes in contact with a piece of DNA. Another thing we have to add is a PCR cofactor, um, and it's a divalent uh, ion, and a lot of times the one that you're going to add is something with magnesium in it. Uh, you can add other cofactors uh, for PCR that are divalent, but magnesium is the cheapest, and so it's often the one that's most used. All right, so PCR cofactor, we're going to talk about what it is, but basically it's just a catalyst that's going to allow that enzyme to uh, really quickly do what it needs to do. And that is all it takes for the master mix. All right, so, um, so that is all the components for that PCR master mix. The only thing that you would need um, to add after that, once you have your master mix assembled, is your DNA that you want copied. So we, that's called the template DNA. So now we're going to talk about what each of the components of a PCR master mix actually do and kind of key into these special functions because you are going to see it again and again and again. Um, and so make sure that you are able to identify what these components of this master mix do. Um, all right, so the first one is a temperature tolerant DNA polymerase. Uh, it's a long, long phrase here and usually um, these are just DNA polymerases that have been isolated from bacteria that can withstand 
high, high temperatures, uh, some things around the nature of 100 degrees Celsius. So very high temperatures around boiling. It's a lot res more resistant than our own DNA polymerases that we have in our body. If we put our own DNA polymerases in this boiling hot water, they would to be destroyed. They, they would not withstand that boiling hot temperature. So you have temperature tolerant DNA polymerases. Um, and these temperature tolerant DNA polymerases are going to assemble nucleotides in a DNA strand just like any other DNA polymerase. Remember, DNA polymerase is going to make a polymer, DNA polymerase, it's going to make a polymer of those nucleotides. It's going to assemble a chain of those nucleotides. And there are two main types of DNA, temperature tolerant DNA polymerases that are isolated and used for PCR. Good thing to note here. All right, so the first one uh, is known as TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase, and it's isolated from the bacteria Thermus aquaticus in hot springs. Um, and so they just abbreviate it TAC. And if you look to the right, there is a picture of one of those hot springs uh, that it's isolated from, commonly isolated from, and it's from Yellowstone National Park hot springs in Wyoming in the United States. Another one that is um, commonly used is something known as PFU polymerase, or PFU. All right, so PFU polymerase is isolated from the bacteria Pyrococcus furiosus. Uh, the fast and the furiosus is what I like to call it sometimes because this is a really quick uh, DNA polymerase just like the TAC is, and it's able to uh, withstand those high temperatures. And it's typically isolated from uh, bacteria that are located in the hydrothermal vents, which are down deep in the bottom of the ocean uh, where these plates and stuff are, these tectonic plates are moving. Uh, and so you get some of those, those gases and uh, those bacteria in that area. The, the big thing to, to note is that these DNA polymerases are going to be able to operate at high temperatures, um, which is going to be necessary for that first step in PCR, which is that denaturation. denaturation. Um, because we're going to have to do this over and over and over again, uh, 30 cycles, you don't want to have to keep adding uh, DNA polymerase to the, the reactions over and over and over. You want something that's going to be able to withstand that high temperature each time. And so that's what these guys do. They, they do not care if you boil them at 100 degrees Celsius, they will still survive. All right, so what's the next thing we have to add to our mix here? So the next thing that we need to add is something called DNTPs, or deoxynucleotide triphosphates. And it's essentially just a nucleotide, as you can see there, and you have your adenine, your thymine, your guanine, and your cytosine. Um, but the only difference is that they have two extra phosphate groups, and you can see that right here. So here is a typical um, adenine, okay? So this is a typical adenine. Remember, you have your phosphate, which is located right here, your sugar, and your nitrogen base, right? Um, but the only difference is, is that in this one, you have three phosphates, okay? And so they call it a DNTP, a deoxynucleotide triphosphate. Um, and there are four different types, of course, as you may assume, four different types of uh, deoxynucleotide triphosphates. So the first one is DATP, which is deoxyadenosine triphosphate. And they just change it from adenine to adenosine because there's taking into account just this part right here. All right, so it's adenosine if it's just the sugar and the, the base, and then you add the three phosphates, so it's deoxyadenosine triphosphate. Eh, big deal. All right, so the next one, of course, is your DCTP, which is this guy right here. All right, so uh, deoxycytidine triphosphate. And you, all you'll need to know is just the DNTPs, okay, so you don't have to memorize deoxyadenosine, deoxycytidine, you know, and I'm not going to, you know, test you on, on that information. Uh, the next thing is deoxythymidine triphosphate, and that is this guy right here, so this one right here in the bottom corner. And then finally, deoxyguanosine 
triphosphate. All right, so we've got our building blocks in there. We've got our DNA polymerase. We've got, uh, you know, our uh, all the other stuff going. And what else do we need to add? So the next thing we need to add, of course, is our forward and reverse primers. All right, so these are the small oligonucleotides or few nucleotide segments that are going to be complementary. They're single-stranded pieces of DNA, usually between 10 to 30 base pairs, um, or base base spaces, sequences, not base pairs, I should say, because they're just single-stranded. Um, and they're going to be um, together, um, so that way you can add that to your target DNA sequence. So the forward and reverse primers uh, are going to be complementary to your target DNA are surrounding that target DNA on either side. Uh, and so the complementary DNA, uh, we just shorten that to cDNA. And it's going to anneal to either side of that target DNA sequence to ensure that we get that copied region of your DNA. And it's going to have to be, uh, one's going to have to go in one direction, so that way it makes sure that it copies this part of it and not that part. You don't... We don't want that part copied. Uh, we do want this part. Um, and so we're going to need something that's called a forward primer that's going to go through. It's going to copy that sequence um, on this side. Actually, it's going to copy the other side, but I'll show you. It's actually going to be on this side here. Um, but uh, we want to make sure that it, it copies the target DNA sequence. And then we're going to also need a reverse primer. And the reverse primer is going to go in the opposite direction on the complementary DNA strand. So you have your double strand right here. This is your double-stranded DNA, and it's gonna separate out, remember, during denaturation, and you're gonna need a primer that's gonna to bind to each side, and it's going to copy that target DNA sequence, this part right here in the center that we wanna get copied. Um, and one thing to note is that uh, your DNA is always going to be synthesized five prime to three prime. That's always that's the nature, that's the rule of DNA synthesis. So um, it's going to have to attach to the three prime ends, and that's why I you know, made a little mistake there, and I had to correct myself. It's going to have to attach to the three prime ends, so that way it can assemble five prime to three prime. All right. So anything complementary starting right here is going to be five prime, right? And anything complementary here is going to be five prime, and so you're just going to have to go five prime to three prime on both sides. So it has to be attaching to that three prime end on that target DNA sequence. Once it's done its copying, uh, it's going to be that primer is a piece of DNA, and <laughs> the DNA polymerase is going to think it's a piece of DNA, and so it's going to incorporate that into your copied region. So you're going to use that primer each time you are making a copy of DNA. So we have to add enough primer to that sample to make sure it makes enough copies. So just real quick like I'm going to show you here. So we attach our primers here at the three prime ends of the target DNA sequence. And then uh, that's going to be actually at the annealing stage. So with denaturation, you'd separate out the two pieces of DNA. And then the annealing stage, depending upon the primer, whatever temperature it is. And then after that, um, you're going to extend that DNA sequence um, once it's ramped up to 72 degrees Celsius. And of course, then you have a complementary strand that's five prime to three prime on both sides. So it's kind of like in vitro PCR, basically, or in the test tube. The next thing we have to add is our uh, our TAC or PFU buffer. All right, so the TAC or PFU buffer is going to be just a mixture of water and ions that stabilizes the enzyme and keeps the enzyme in a working environment. Very important that we keep our enzymes happy, otherwise they won't work for us. Um, so usually this buffer is going to contain TRIS buffer uh, and uh, we're going to titrate it up a little bit, make it a little more acidic by adding HCl or hydrochloric acid. Uh, and you want the pH of that to be around 8.3, which is what the optimal pH is for TAC and PFU. All right, so what's the next thing we have to add? Um, 
The next thing we have to add is a cofactor. All right, and I said before it's a divalent ion, uh, which means it's got an elect two electrons basically, and uh, another one ion that has two electrons and its valence is magnesium. And so we're going to use the cofactor magnesium, and it's kind of going to help speed up the reaction here. So a cofactor essentially is going to catalyze or speed up the enzyme's reaction. It's going to uh, allow it to be freed up and be able to be used uh, so that way it can do this process. So magnesium chloride is going to speed up the activity of the TAC or the PFU polymerase, whichever one that you're using, to assemble nucleotides. All right, so that is everything that I wanted to talk to you about today. So I'm going to leave you with these questions. And I want you to think about this. And if you missed them, I want you to go back and see if you can answer these questions. So the first off is, what is a master mix? So take a minute and jot down what a master mix is. The next thing is, what are the components of a PCR master mix? All right, and finally, what do the components of a PCR master mix do? All right, thank you so much.